In the year 1949, there is a big fuss about a man called Bruno Gröning, who is known in the media as the miracle healer. Thousands of people go to see him in various German cities. There are continual reports about new, unbelievable healings. Even people diagnosed as incurable by physicians swear by his wondrous powers. Some call him a messiah, others a charlatan. I was in Rosenheim today at the Traberhof. You won't believe what was going on there. There were thousands of people and Gröning. Oh God, that Gröning. Are you going to start with that again? There were so many sick people there in wheelchairs and on stretchers and suddenly, suddenly some of them stood up. Oh, no, stop it. My hand was paralyzed. I couldn't bring a spoon to my mouth anymore. And my lame hand was treated as well as possible, but it was still lame. I was wounded in 1943 on board a submarine. My left elbow joint was shattered and I was brought to the naval hospital at Stralsund, where I was operated on. After the operation, they found that my arm couldn't be moved and remained bent. I was like that until 1949. That was how people knew me. I was often just called the one-armed man because it looked as though my left arm was artificial. Well, more and more people came, more and more people, until there were thousands. I would guess up to 5,000, you know. It was hard to estimate. And then the healings took place again, perhaps an even greater number. One of the people lying on a stretcher got up and said, I'm well, I'm well. What I saw were the people in wheelchairs, and there were quite a number. I don't remember anymore how many, who actually followed Gröning's command and got up out of the wheelchairs and pushed the wheelchairs themselves. That's what I saw. It was only later that I was impressed by it all. As long as I was standing there, as long as he was speaking, nothing impressed me, to be entirely honest. It was only when I saw the effects on the people in wheelchairs, the blind boy, and then afterwards, a few days later, with my father, that I naturally had an entirely different opinion. That's normal, isn't it? Then you have to change your opinion. Beforehand, I just, well, I don't want to put it that way, it was just something I watched. The facts are convincing, you know. I'm not very gullible, you see. First, I have to see something happen. He just looked at me, like this, and I showed him my hand, so more or less. And then, I don't know, was there a table there or something? In any case, I had my hand like this, and suddenly my fingers were drumming, like drum fire a long time. And at that moment, the paralysis was gone. It went away within half an hour. Then I tried to straighten my arm, which had been like that for years, and it became straight. And then I could only yell, I can move it, I can move it. Naturally, I was very critical. I didn't know which pigeonhole to put it in. As far as I knew, it could be hypnosis or suggestion, you know? A couple of possibilities came to mind where I might put it, but it didn't fit in them. It was simply something completely different that I just never experienced before and couldn't fit into my existing knowledge. People couldn't figure it out. A person they'd seen going around for years with a stiff arm could suddenly move it. Then the question naturally arose, how did that happen? And then I actually always spoke in favour of Gröning and said I hadn't believed it beforehand, but had been convinced through my own healing that he was able to do something with me that the medical doctors just hadn't been able to. Dass er etwas konnte, was eben die Mediziner nicht geschafft haben bei mir. During a community hour, Adolf Groth meets Bruno Gröning. He was suffering from stomach cancer and had been given up by the doctors. The war put its stamp on us. The war destroyed us. That was the whole thing. 
emotionally destroyed. During the war, we weren't normal human beings. We were hyenas. As a normal human being, you can't shoot anyone, but we had to. Either you or me. That's not normal. We were doing it. We were not normal. And our life was hanging on a thread. And then you look for something. Just like in the war, where you're the front, you grasp at straws, something you can hold on to. It can be over at any moment. It's awful when you experience something like that. It's no wonder that we got sick, that we were emotionally destroyed. He stand up with iron by him grab. I stood with one leg in the grave. That's how sick I was. <laughs> I wanted help. I couldn't eat anything anymore. Nothing. As I later learned, my family doctor said that I had stomach cancer. And then we drove stop. over there. I don't know anymore how that came about. Somehow we were with several people. Then we drove there, and then there was salvation. It was salvation for us, for all of us there. The hall was full. That was salvation for everyone. For all. So you felt newborn. That's how light you felt. The heaviness went out of the body. And at that moment, and also thereafter, as we drove away, we weren't sick anymore. We didn't perceive anything, any, any more of the sickness. It was gone. And as soon as I got back, I could eat again, and it didn't come back again. That simple. But that was the transmission of Gröning's powers, which he radiated. And the body was charged up, and then the body could run freely again, a free current, you could say. Then everything can function normally again. And if you can't believe, then just forget about it. But nobody can take my belief away from me. I have this attitude. I had it back then, and I still have it. And I do very well with it. I'm getting old. I am old, or getting old, how do you say it? And that is the most beautiful thing. I take joy in life. That I'm still here, and that I'm still healthy. The rush to Bruno Gröning continues to grow. Some see in him a new messiah, others consider him a charlatan. The medical profession, above all, proves to be more than skeptical about the Gröning phenomenon. Gröning is prohibited from healing. In spite of the prohibition, more and more seekers of healing came from afar. The pressure on the authorities by those people who were in profound physical and emotional misery became stronger and stronger. In fact, Gröning is charged with having continued to practice healing without permission and thereby with having violated the healing practitioner law. Reports appear continually after it becomes known that he is going to be put on trial. The defendant behaved just like a charlatan, negligently and illegally. A regular battle of the medical physicians is started by the Gröning phenomenon. They don't know what to make of the happenings. Gröning always emphasizes that God is the greatest physician and that there is no such thing as incurable. What counts for him are the commandment of charity and the realization that he should not listen to man, but only to God. Bruno Gröning described himself as follows. I only want to be a guide for humankind in that I show them the right path, the path to God. I want to bring humankind back to faith. I never ask a person his religion or nation. Human being is human being. There is no difference. And don't ever say that I healed you. Never. I'm only a little go-between. Nothing more. A little transformer. People who have received healing should thank God for it. I'm nothing. God is everything. 